Hello. Are you there? If you're there, write a message. Somebody write a message so I know that I'm not speaking into a void. Al vacío. Estoy hablando al vacío. Am I speaking into emptiness, darkness, into the void? Welcome. Welcome to a new program. Yes, Richard Vaughn Live. Here I am as every Monday. Yes, sir. Every Monday at 12 noon. That's in it. Ah, the sun. Well, in solar time, the sun would be straight up. But in any case, welcome to a new program. And I'm, this is, I spent two hours on the radio. Hello, Lola. Thank you, Lola, for, hi. So at least Lola's watching. Yeah, Lola. My name was Ricky when I was a little boy. Eh? Not anymore. All right. But in any case, uh, welcome. And I'm here to teach English. And I'm here to answer your questions. Good morning, Pepe. Good morning from Valencia. Yes, sir. And I'm tired of television. This morning, I spent 45 minutes on another television program teaching B1. Oh, it's on those libros, eh? So heavy, eh? Looks like someone is B1. If you're interested, buy these books, eh? Buy these books. Yes. They're very, very good, eh? I did three 15-minute programs this morning, and I only covered four pages. And there are 400 pages in this book, and 315 pages, 715 pages in all. And in three, in 45 minutes of television, I only covered four pages. Can you believe it? Ugh. And then <clears throat> we have B2. And we have C1 as well, so we have a lot of things. And here I have the yellow pages. Can you see the yellow pages? 2003, 2004. Can you see it? Yeah? I think this is the last physical yellow pages published in the city of Madrid. 1,000... 238 pages of business, successful businesses. The vast majority, la inmensa mayoría, en inglés cuando se dice inmensa mayoría, se dice vasta con V. La vasta mayoría, the vast majority, are successful companies. Huh. Wow, this is the heart of the economy, these people. But remember, 95% of all businesses die in the first five years. So these 1,200 pages are the survivors, the 5%. All right. Lola and Pepe from Valencia. Alberto. Hello, Alberto. Also from Valencia. Wow, mucho valenciano soy. So, and Lola, I know your mom used to call you Ricky. Lola, you're getting a little bit... Uh, ¿Dónde hay confianza? All right, Lola. Yeah, she called me Ricky until I was probably nine Tin, and then she started calling me Rick. And my name has always been Rick until I came to Spain. And when I came to Spain, I changed my name to Richard because Span the Spanish language is not a good language for monosyllables. Monosyllable. Rick Vaughn. Rick Vaughn. Bum, bum. No. Rick Vaughn. No. Richard Vaughan. Okay, so I made two syllables Richard and Vaughan instead of Vaughn. All right. So, Lola, thank you very much. Day, I remember. You're from Colombia? From Bogota? Uh, I don't remember. I get confused. I have people from Bolivia, from Mexico, from Argentina, from Chile, from Peru, from all over the world. Yes, sir. So, hello, Day, Day, Day. Okay, hello. And Sergio, good morning from Mexico, ¿ves? Ah, you see? Good morning from Mexico, lindo. Sergio Bustamante. Yes, sir. Thank you for your program, and thank you for tuning in. Gracias por sintonizar. Sintonizar. Sintonizar, como dicen aquí, uh, through uh, this channel. It's a pleasure having people from Mexico. I have a special, there's a special place. Mexico has a special place in my heart, because I'm soy tejano. <laughs> Gordo y sano, all right? Not Mexicano, but we're neighbors and good neighbors. I've been to Monterrey, Guadalajara, Saltillo, Guanajuato, San Miguel de Allende, um, San Luis de Potosí, and I've been to, my God, Mexico City, of course. I've been to many places and to uh, Pachuca as well. 
in the estado de Hidalgo. Yes, I've been there. All right, where are we? Let's see, more, more, more. Giancarlo. That's, that, that's an interesting spelling for that name. El apellido es Rojas. Now, that's a Spanish surname, but the first, the spelling, Juan Carlos, Giancarlo con K, is strange, because Giancarlo, I'm sure, is an Italian name with the C, but not with the K. From Colombia, Colombia, Medellin, Bucaramanga, there are many nice places, Aracataca is also in Cali. Yes, I met some people just the other day from Cali. Sitting, you see that couch over there? There were two ladies, very attractive, by the way, from uh, Cali. Okay, and so, wow. All the women in Colombia are attractive, and in Venezuela, too. <laughs> I need to go. I've been to Bogota, but I've never been to Cali or to Medellin or to Barranquilla or Bucaramanga or Cartagena. Etc. So I have a lot of things to do with concerning Colombia. Pedro, good morning from Bilbao. Bilbao, Bilbao is a beautiful city. Many years ago, well, several years ago, it was not so beautiful because it was very industrial. It's interesting. Bilbao is similar to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, como dicen aquí, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Both were based on la siderurgia, iron and steel the iron and steel industry, and both were cleaned up. Pittsburgh is very pretty now, very attractive, and Bilbao is as well, very, very attractive. All right, so let's go on. Day, you have a great memory. Yes, Day is from Bogo. No, I don't have a great memory. Yeah, there are two things you lose with age, your memory, and I can't remember the second one. All right, so Yolanda, good morning. That's my, me, my favorite, Cantabra. Yes, all's well here in Madrid, although it's been raining a lot. Yesterday it rained all day. It rained all day and it rained all night. It rained all day and it rained all night. Fijaos, en inglés, la conectividad silábica o fonética. Llovió todo el día y llovió toda la noche. Escuchad, it rained all day and it rained all night. Doll, como muñeca, una, una muñeca, doll. It rained all. It rained all day. Pero nadie lo dice así en inglés. Decimos, it rained all. La D de rained se enlaza descaradamente con all. Se robaron. Deja rain. Se me allá tú. Y se pega con all. It rained all day. Mucho de dura aquí en inglés. Rained all day. Rained all day. Dull day. Dull day. Muñeca día. Dull day. It rained all day. Llovió todo el día. It rained all day and it rained all night. Yes, sir. Where are we now? I'm losing my place. Juan Camilo. Wow. Saludos desde Medellín. Wow. Medellín is a beautiful city, they say. I've never been there. My son has bought some property just outside of Medellín. So I have a connection to Medellín, but I haven't been. That's a signature pendiente. Yes. I'll have to go to Medellín. All right. So. I'm teaching B1 right now on another television channel through YouTube. Y no está subido todavía a YouTube. Eh? No lo busquéis todavía. Don't look for it yet. But I'm teaching simple stuff, but very, very important. The simplest elements in English are by far the most important. By far significa con mucha diferencia. By far. Those palabritas, by far. The most basic elements are by far the most important. It's interesting about the present tense in English. In, in Vaughan, here in Vaughan, we call it el presente habitual. Porque son acciones habituales que realizamos. Every day I get up, every day I take a shower, every day I leave home, every day I come here, every Monday I talk to you. And so to talk, get up. This is present habitual. Acciones que habitualmente realizo. Ahora bien, acciones en vías de realización, presente continuo. Eh? I am looking at the camera. I'm looking at you. I'm speaking to you. I'm holding a book in both hands. I'm pointing at you. I'm pointing at you with both hands. So now I'm using the present continuous. En español podéis intercambiar los dos. Mire como te miro. <laughs> Mira como te miro. Look at how I'm looking at you. In English, I can see looking. 
Mira es imperativo. Mira, mire como le miro. O mire como te miro. Look at how I'm looking at you. Mire como te señalo. Dice señalo, te estoy señalando. Se puede decir los dos en español, pero en inglés no. Mire como estoy sujetando el libro con ambas manos. Look at how, look at how I'm holding the book. I'm holding the book with both hands. Look at how I'm holding my hands together. Look at how I'm clapping. I'm applauding. Well done, etc. All right, where are we? I'm losing my place. Pepe Vicente, hello. Richard, when you come to Valencia, go see me for the best shoe store. Hombre, well, you need to send the address. I mean, if I, if I want to buy some shoes and I'm in Valencia, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, escuchar lo que voy a decir. Cuando vaya a Valencia la próxima vez, cuando vaya, claro, subjuntivo en español, when I go, en inglés usamos el indicativo, cuando voy. O sea, cuando vaya a Valencia, compraré zapatos en tu tienda. When I go to Valencia, I'll definitely, definitely, definitivamente, no, definitely, definitely in English, sin, sin duda alguna, sin lugar a dudas, dato, dato por seguro, I'll definitely buy shoes in your store, if you give me a discount, hmm? si me haces un descuento, en inglés se dice, si me das un descuento, y yo creo que en Latinoamérica en algún país dicen dar descuento y no hacer descuento, yo creo que en Perú he oído, me vas a dar, no, 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 no damos descuentos. Here in Spain you say hacer descuentos. In English, to give. You give me a small discount, huh, please? I'm giving you a free English classes. How much are you paying for this? Okay, now, I'll buy it at the regular price. Carlos Mendoza, how are you? Hi, Richard. What are the most used phrasal verbs in English? Look at, <laughs> look for, to uh, sit down, to get up or to stand up to, uh, these are the most common, of course. There are about 500 phrasal verbs. Most of them are not important. For, but most of them I don't recommend for speaking. Eh? Don't even try for understanding. Phrasal verbs, you know, if I had my book, I have a book. I didn't bring it, I'm not ready. But phrasal verbs, the majority of the phrasal verbs are impossible to learn. You will never assimilate phrasal verbs in such a way that you can reproduce them dynamically. Usar los phrasal verbs como con la facilidad con, con, con que dices good morning, imposible. Ni los suecos, ni holandeses, ni dina, din, din, daneses, y dinameses. De, daneses usan los phrasal verbs en in inglés. Sabo los sencillos, look at, look for, uh, come out, go in, go out, get into, get out of, Meterse en el coche to get into the car. Salir del coche to get out of the car. Pero hay muchos más. Don't let on. O sea, no dejes que se entienda. Don't let on. Don't make it up. I'll make it up to you. ¿Cómo te lo puedo compensar? ¿Cómo te lo puedo enmender? Enmen, enmendar, perdona. Por la faena que te he hecho. Eh, lo siento. How can I make up for it? It's very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult. Hmm. Phrasal verbs are to be understood. You need to study phrasal verbs from the passive listening point of view. But from the active reproduction point of view, only 20 perhaps. Look at, look for, take, take over, take up. It's a few, only a few. Pick up, etc. So, Pepe Vicente again. I work right in the center of Valencia and I would be very excited to say hello again. You are my idol. No, no, que no tengas ídolos. Ídolos, ídolos no existen. I'm not your idol. I'm simply your English teacher. <laughs> no, nothing more. But I will, if you send the address uh, to Vaughan, to the website of Vaughan, I'll, I'll make an effort to buy some shoes. Pepe, Austria. Oh, okay, good. Calle Austria 36. If anybody wants to buy shoes in Valencia, Go to Calle Austria 26, frente al Corte Inglés. Don't buy your shoes in the Corte Inglés. Cross the street <laughs> to Calle Austria 36. No tiene perdida. It's easy to understand that. And buy your shoes there. I'm sure you will receive better care, better attention, and probably better shoes. So, but the Corte Inglés is a good, has a good shoe department, but nothing like Calle Austria 36. So, cross the street. All right.
So, uh, if you come, I will give you, I suppose he means I'll give you a discount. I hope so. But it's not, no, I'll pay the normal price. Don't worry. You owe me a lot, Pepe said. No, you know me the best, nada. You don't owe me a lot. I'm doing this. Listen, I teach English for money. <laughs> I'm a mercenary, right? I enjoy doing it, but in any case, um, indirectly, my company benefits from this. Maybe 1% of the people who watch me on this buy something from us. And, but it's necessary because we need the money to do this for this office. There are 660 people working here. It's a lot of people, my God. And so it's a, it's a big responsibility. Of the 660 people working in this company, probably 250 are married with children and mortgages, hipotecas. So it's absolutely imperative that this company remain viable, viable, and profitable, rentable, because there's, there are a lot of people who depend on this company for their livelihood. Fijaos como digo livelihood. Livelihood significa forma de vivir, forma de ganarse la vida y de vivir. Para su vivencia, digamos, for their livelihood. A lot of people depend on this. And not only people here, but indirectly. Uh, there are people who, across the street, there's a bar. And I think maybe 10% of the revenue of that bar is people from here who go across the street to have coffee and things. Because they serve very good coffee across the street. But nevertheless, where are we? Pepe, okay. Juan Camilo, how are you? Juan Camilo, how are you? How can we use some prepositions at the end of the of a sentence? Oh, it's easy. What's the rule? By the rule, regla, look. In preguntas, la preposición suele estar colgada, colgada al final de la frase. ¿De dónde eres? ¿Dónde eres de? Where are you from? Where are you from? ¿Quién hablas a? O sea, ¿a quién estás hablando? Who are you talking to? ¿A quién estás señalando? O sea, ¿a quién estás señalando a? O sea, realmente en el, en, el, en el afirmativo, soy de Texas. Soy de Estados Unidos. I am from. O sea, from se pone después de yo estoy. O soy. Yo soy de. ¿De dónde? ¿Dónde soy de? Soy de. O sea, en inglés se, se mantiene. No. En español se pone adelante, luego detrás. ¿De dónde eres? It is de. So where are you from? Who are you? Who am I point? Who am I pointing at? A quién estoy señalando? I'm pointing at myself. What? Which hand am I hitting? You're hitting your left hand. What am I taking off? Que estoy sacando fuera, literalmente. Que, que me estoy quitando. What am I taking off? Uh, what? What am I turning? around. What am I turning? You're turning around a book. Yeah. What am I turning over? Because out is over. Right? You're turning over the same book. What are you turning over? Who am I speaking to? I'm speaking to you, etc., etc. These are prepositions at the end. La pregunta se pone el, casi siempre. Se pone al final. Si se pone al principio, suena un poco sofisticado, rebuscado y raro. To whom am I speaking? You know, somebody, hello? Uh, ¿Con quién estoy hablando? ¿Con quién hablo? To whom am I speaking? Sounds very strange. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Who is this? Well, may I ask who's speaking, etc. All right. Oikles. It's an interesting name. Oikles de Kos. Carpe diem, Mr. Vaughn. Here we are. Here we are again. Here we are again. Just you and me together for another hour until one o'clock. We still have 40 minutes left. Nos quedan aún 40 minutos. We still have. We still have. We still have. Still by entre el sujeto y el verbo. Si el verbo no es to be. Si es to be, va después to be. We are still here. We still have 40 minutes left. Antonia, Tony, Antonia, saludos desde Cadiz, Cadiz, And Andalusia. Yeah, uh, in English, sometimes people say Cadiz or Cadiz. 
Gad, Gades, Gades, it's the oldest colony or the oldest community in Europe, they say. Founded, they say, by the Phoenicians. Pero creo que no, creo que ya existía antes los, incluso los Fenecios. Fenicios, 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 right? Marta Fenicios, yeah. But it's interesting because in the, in the year 1000 BC, 1000 years before Christ, 1000 BC, Gades or Cadiz existed. It was a Phoenician community and they were going up to Cornwallis in England because of the tin, estaño, había estaño en Cornwallis. 1000 years before Christ, they were moving from they were, the Phoenicians were going all the way up to Cornwall, or at least they were, they were trading, comerciando, trading with people from Cornwall. I think 3,000, 4,000 years ago, the world was more active than we think. But nevertheless, it's very interesting. So, Antonia, welcome from Cadiz. Adrian, hello Richard. Your book, Nuestro Escenario, changed my life. Well... It was a turning point. One of the best books I've ever read, really. Well, thank you very much, Adrián. Tengo un libro que se llama Nuestro Orden del Escenario. It's interesting, the story behind this book. In the year 2008, I think, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, a publishing house... Publishing house is the word, una casa editorial, decimos publishing house. A publishing house approached me, came to me and said, Richard, uh, we would like you to write a book about how to learn English. And so I wrote a book, 260 pages, which is, si quieres puedes. Si quieres aprender inglés, puedes aprender inglés. Pero hay que ir por este camino, no este otro. So I wrote the book, it was very successful, it was a bestseller. 40,000 books were sold which in Spain is a bestseller. And so the publishing house, La Vericia Rompe el Saco, es un dicho vuestro. The publisher says, wow, there's money here. And so they approached me again, said, Richard, uh, can you write another book? I said, well, I don't know. What about? You know, about what? Lo que sea. Te compran. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't write another book about learning English because everything I needed to say is already contained in Si Quieres Puedes. So I decided to write a book about, I guess, philosophy of life, approach. El enfoque para la vida, enfoque vital. And I wrote Nuestro en el escenario. Viene de Shakespeare, de, de, de la obra Mac Macbeth, como decís aquí. En inglés se dice Macbeth. Y hay una cita lúgubre, pesimista del todo, en las profundidades más profundas del pesimismo imaginable, fatalismo. Hay una cita del Macbeth mismo. Y partiendo de esa cita, entona un canto al optimismo. Ok. That's called Nuestra Hora en el Escenario, porque Macbeth dice, well, Shakespeare dice a través de Macbeth, que la vida no es más que un pobre actor, un pobre cómico que se pavonea, agita su hora en el escenario para después, ¡pam!, desaparecer y pasar al olvido como una gota que cae al océano pacífico y se diluye. O sea, la vida no es más que un cómico que se pavonea y agita su única hora del escenario. ¡Pam! ¡Fuera! Y hay millones que han pasado ya y millones que están en, en cola esperando. So it's a very pessimistic approach to life. And so, solo tenemos una hora en el escenario en el tiempo astronómico o tiempo geológico. Nuestro hora en el escenario es um, un instante en el tiempo astronómico. Entonces, what is our approach? What is our philosophy? You know, it's very easy to be pessimistic, very fatalistic, pero ¿qué vale? You know, it's, it's absurdo, esta vida. But you have to make a decision because it's your moment on the stage. It's tu momento. No importes a nadie, ni, ni al técnico de luces que está ahí por obligación. But you have to make a decision on how you approach life. And that's nuestro escenario, 270 páginas. So, thank you very much, Adrián, for that nice... I'm glad 
my book was uh, influential or helped you. I'm glad. Verissima. Verissima. What a beautiful name. Verissima. Good morning, Mr. Vaughn. I'm here again. I'm not sure if I re You were here before, Verissima. Yes. It's Veridico. Verissima. Uh, you were here. Well, welcome, Verissima. It's a real pleasure. Candora. Or Candora. I mentioned Candora. Como Pandora, la de la caja. You know, Pandora's box. Candora's box. Candora Plus. Mr. Richard, it's a pleasure to... It's a pleasure to hear you. Quita la de. It's a pleasure to hear you live. No, in live. Claro, en, en español se dice en vivo o en directo. Pero no, vivo. It's a pleasure to hear you live every Monday. About, li about listening English. About, o sea, con respecto a escuchar en inglés. About listening to English. Huh? Should we expect to reach a 100% comprehension someday? Uh, well, expect is not the right word. You should, you should try to achieve 100% comprehension. Maybe it's not possible, but you need to work. This is the most important element, always. Listening comprehension is everything. Los mudos, los solo mudos, no son mudos. Tienen recuerdos vocales en perfectas condiciones. Cualquier otorrino, cualquier médico dirá que un solo mudo tiene acuerdos como tú y yo pero no las pueden utilizar porque no oyen. La comunicación empieza aquí. Si esto falla, the party is over. Apague y vámonos, as they say in Spanish. So, this is your priority in your time is for the ear. You must try to become a perfectionist, but it's impossible, of course. Perfect understanding. But you need to work hard in this area. It's much more important to understand well than to speak well. Of course, both, fantastic. But if you were to prioritize, prioritize here. All right. So 100% probably impossible, but you need, you need to work hard in listening comprehension. There's not a maximum point. There's not a maximum point. Candora. When I go to Scotland, if I go to Glasgow, <laughs> and I go to a pub con ruido de fondo with background noise, I, no, no entiendo los coceses. Si hay ruido de fondo. And so, I, and so it's, 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 you never reach perfect understanding, but you need to always improve and continue improving. And it's your, pri I repeat, it's your priority focus. Amarga. Hello, Richard from Uruguay, Uruguay. I'm Uruguay, he's Uruguay, and you're Uruguay. Uruguay. Montevideo. Salta. Salta. Salto. I can't remember. Uh, ¿Cómo hago para leer tu libro? ¿Cuál? Which one? ¿Nuestro en el escenario? Yeah. Uh, the, or this one. Are you talking about this book? Are you interested in the B1, B2? Maybe you're interested in the Páginas Amarillas. You want to read the yellow pages? I don't think so. Nuestro en el escenario. You go into baugantienda.com or grupobaugant.com and we can find a way. Querer es poder, ¿no? Where there's a will, there's a way. All right, and we can send you the book to Uruguay, I think. Obien, maybe, um, I'm not sure. I need to talk to my editorial chief, but maybe we can uh, send you a PDF, a PDF file with the book. Or maybe a Word file with the book. Okay, the Word file. Una, un fichero de Word. And so we can send it to you. It's a very good book, in my opinion, of course. But it's very American. I'm American. In, uh, the approach to life it smells American. You can tell. All right, Javi, greeting from Seville. Sevilla es una maravilla. Como digo cada vez que Javi writes to me. Sevilla es una mar maravilla. Granada no es nada. <laughs> well, Marta, the one on the other side of the camera, is Sevillana. Yeah. Sevillana. And so, um, but Granada is preciosa. Huh? <laughs> but Sevilla is una maravilla. La Parque Mar Luisa. Wow. And the Barrio de Santa Cruz. It's very, very nice. And then, Isabel Lebron. Isabel, how are you? Greetings. Do, do, did you visit Mallorca? No. Se diría, have you ever visited Mallorca? Several times. 
The first time I went to Mallorca, I went from Palma de Mallorca, of course, to, what's the name of it, Valde, Valdemosa, where our favorite pianist Chopin spent some time with George Sand. And then I went to Deya, and I stayed in La Residencia in Deya before it became famous. Now it's very famous and too expensive, but I was there in the Residencia. And I've been back to Mallorca several times. It's a beautiful, beautiful island full of German people. <laughs> in fact, the number one newspaper, the, one, the, the number one physical newspaper in Mallorca is German language newspaper. And of course, in Magalus, there's a lot of English people. But in any case, Mallorca is a beautiful place. Alejandro, Esteban Garcia Restrepo. Wow. Hello, Richard. Hello, Alejandro and Lucia. Lucia Libre. 25 minutes late. Lucia, come on. You're late. Marta, what should we do? ¿Qué hacemos con Lucia? Ha llegado tarde. Hmm. An exemplary punishment. We need to think up an example. Think up. Idear un castigo ejemplar. Yeah. Welcome, Lucia. It's good to have you here. All right. Where are we? Ina Osman. That's an interesting name. Hi. I find the Cockney accent very difficult to understand. Me too. Ya somos dos. Okay. Well, we share something. The Cockney accent is, well, if you go to the Cockney district of London, forget it. You remember this? You remember the movie My Fair Lady, which comes from the play by George Bernard Shaw called Pygmalion, Pygmalion, and it's based on the story of a flower, of Cockney flower girl, in East London selling flowers. And Henry Higgins is a linguist, and he's a logopeda. He's a speech therapist, and he and his friend make a bet. He makes a bet that he can teach Eliza Doolittle, the Cockney girl, to speak in good English, proper English. And that's the story. And Henry Higgins falls in love with her. Se enamora de ella durante el proceso de mejorar su habla, su dicción y su, su how do you say, exposición verbal. And so he falls in love with her. The original play, which is not a musical, is called Pygmalion because it's based on a story from Greek mythology, la mitología griega, Greek mythology, which is a sculptor who sculpted a beautiful female, a beautiful woman. He fell in love with the statue, con la estatua, con la figura. And every day when he went to, he embraced her and kissed the marble statue, de marble. But one day she turned into a woman. And that's a bit similar to George Bernard Shaw on Pygmalion. It's a, and so Cockney is difficult. For example, mi mantequilla es mejor que tu mantequilla. En un británico puro, un inglés perfecto, sería, my butter is better than your butter. In Texas, in Texas we say, my butter is better than your butter. My butter is better than your butter. And the Cockney. My butter is better your butter. My butter. Butter. My butter is better. Better than your butter. But, butter. All right. And in Texas, my butter is better than your butter. In todo America, más o menos. My butter is better than your butter. And my butter is better than all the butter. But in perfect received pronunciation or in in, I don't know, in certain areas of London in the south of England, my butter is better than your butter. Okay. So it's, it's very interesting accents. But it's very interesting in Spanish too. Voy a conducir el coche al parking. Voy a manejar el carro al estacionamiento. Okay. It's very, very different in every country. All right. You would say, el ritmo joven. In and here in Spain, el ritmo joven, de la gente de Gijón. Los jóvenes de Gijón. <laughs> it's very strong. All right. So, Candora, Texas, Richard, what's, what a great mentor you are. Well, thank you, mentor. I'm, well, thank you very much. But that's not my objective. My objective is to have fun. My objective is fun. Alejandro, I live in Madrid. Well, welcome, Alejandro. Yes. I think you're the only person watching me from Madrid. Everybody's from Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Venezuela. 
Cadiz, <laughs> and uh, Uruguay, Argentina, a lot of places. And Daniela, Mexico, as a las cinco de la mañana. This, wow, wow. Sorry, girl, it's very early. But this morning, I got up at 4.30. Eh? Te gané. I beat you. I got up at 4.30 this morning. Because I, I just woke up. And I stayed in bed trying to go back to sleep. And I couldn't, so I got up. Why not? At my age, I don't need to sleep anymore. Soon, I'll be able to sleep all I want. Okay, Silvia, can I watch this video later? Where? Love you from Madrid. Yes, yes, uh, Marta. Este video está en, en el Facebook de Baugan, okay? What, how do you say it? Bueno, Grupo Baugan.com encuentras el Facebook. Pones Facebook Baugan. Presto. I'm sure. Bueno, in Canada, there's a town, important town, called Vaughan. Baugan, Canada. And uh, there are a lot of very important people with the name of Vaughn. So put Grupo Baugan or Baugan Systems, Facebook or, or Richard Baugan, Facebook or something like that. I don't personally have a Facebook page. Okay, Sylvia. So Daniela from Mexico, Candor again, Mr. Richard. <laughs> Where were the most influential? Who were? I don't know. In my life? I don't think anybody. To tell you the truth, parece presuntuos, presumido decir esto. People who had a strong influence on me, my primary school teachers were good. I was lucky. Kindergarten, first grade, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven years. Unas señoras o señoritas con cariño y firmeza. Boom, boom, boom. So I think, and also sports. Sports were good mentors. Grandes deportistas were good mentors uh, for me. But uh, a person in particular that I that I knew, that I, I don't think I've ever had a men mentor, a mentor in my life. Just people from a far distance, people in sports. And my primary, my, my elementary school teachers were very, very good. Eh? I was lucky in that sense. Okay, so, Condoro, well, thank you for your answer. David Garcia, how are you? Hello, Richard. There is any place I can listen to you. Is there? Is there any place? Yes. No me gusta el peropones. Baugan music. But you go to Google. Go to Google. Baugan music todo junto. Si separado no sale. Todo junto. Y creo que puedes acceder a algunas piezas. Okay. Baugan music. Algunas piezas de la Auditoria Nacional, la Sala Sinfónica, y alguna pieza de la Monumental en otro concierto. You can get the music. I don't publish the music. I publish the music, but I don't publish in a CD or uh, in the general public. I published it in a SGAI, in the Sociedad de Autores. It's prote protected. And I bring the music out once every three or four years. It's expensive to do this. Eh? It's, it's not profitable. But you can find my music. Bagun music, music, todo junto. Creo que te saldrá. All right. David, thank you. Lucia, Tenerife. Wow. Have you ever been? I lost my place. Have you ever been to Tenerife? Yes. Only once. But I went to Tenerife Sur, La Zona Sur, that area. Uh, well, I was in the capital for a few hours. And in one place going south, and I went to the south. I was on a television, una gala televisiva, down in the south of uh, <laughs> Tenerife. Very nice. I like Tenerife. Thank you, Lucia. Edel, I love your programs. Than you? Que significa than you? And you? I don't know. I love your programs. Well, thank you very much, Edel Cárdenas. It's a real pleasure. Are you from Mexico? Maybe? Cárdenas? Because one of the pre one of the most important presidents of Mexico in the 20th century was Lázaro Cárdenas. He was a president in the 1930s in Mexico in a very important moment in Mexican history. Let's go on. Pepe Vicente, you are the mentor of a lot of people. Maybe. It doesn't matter. I. It's not my objective to be your mentor. It's not my objective to be your coach. It's just my objective is to enjoy myself first. 
Eso se llama el egoísmo ético. O sea, primero cubro mi propia felicidad, luego emano felicidad o por lo menos vibraciones positivas. Ahora, si yo estoy con un drama encima, pues no voy a emanar vibraciones positivas en, ningún, en ninguna dirección. So, I need to enjoy it first. So, I do it for me. It's a selfish approach. But I do it for me. And because I enjoy it, then I emanate good vibrations. And so you say I'm a mentor. Maybe. Okay, fine. But that's not my objective. My objective is to enjoy life. And enjoying life also requires making money in order to have to feel security, financial security for myself and for the people who help me. It's very important. All right. Let's see. Luis Enrique. Okay. Greetings from greetings from Stockholm. Esto es el colmo. Estocolmo. Stockholm. A Cuban. Cubano con C mayúscula, Cuban. Tucked away somewhere here. All right. That's an interesting. Your English is very good, eh? Tucked away is como en la cama. Acurrucada. Tucked away. O sea, escondido en este caso. En algún sitio de Estocolmo. Some greetings from Stockholm. Stockholm. Fijaos en la pronunciación. Stockholm. Y la L suena. Stockholm. A Cuban tucked away somewhere here. And Luis Enrique, otra vez, I love Frank Zappa to study English. I love Frank Zappa for studying, diría yo más bien, con el fin de estudiar inglés. Frank Zappa is a bit crazy, but he's a very, very brilliant musician. Daniela, I love the name Daniela. Daniela, what is the most interesting book you have read? Ah, alguien me preguntó eso antes. Well, maybe it was you. I have read so many important books. Well, so many, inter I've read about, I don't know, 2,000 books. My God. It's difficult to say because at different ages, I have different sensitivity. And I'm more, uh, I'm perhaps more sensitive at certain ages. Uh, the Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky, is one of the most interesting books I've read in my life. But there are 300 more. So it's, you know, but Dostoevsky, I read it in a, a... When you're younger, you're more impressionable. Impressionable. As you get older, it gets more and more difficult to be impressed. For example, I read Garipath, War and Peace, by Leo Tolstoy, four years ago. And I was not impressed. Well, it's a good book, recommendable, but I was not impressed. I was I was expecting the same that I remember from Dostoevsky when I was 23, tw no, 22. I read the Hermanos Karamazov in Spanish when I was 22, and I was oh, strong, but I was much more impressionable at that age than four years ago. So maybe I'm not comparing apples with apples. Maybe I'm comparing apples with pears. So I don't really know. I can't tell you, Daniela, what's the most interesting book. Because there, if I say one book, es hacer flaco favor a tantos más que son increíbles. Reading, reading, reading. If you want to become intelligent and capable, and you read, 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 read. All right, everything. Bestsellers, it doesn't matter. Just read. Preferably good literature, but even bad literature. Read. So, where are we? Sylvia, I always have problems with pronunciation. What's the best way to improve it? Watching movies, listening to people, listening to people. Don't watch movies. Watch YouTube. YouTube. TED Talks. Interviews on YouTube. Movies, no. Movies, no. La gente no habla tanto. Una película de 100 minutos... La, el diálogo no cubre más de 15 minutos netos. El resto es acción, transición, cámara, pero no, es, no están hablando. So don't use movies. Go into YouTube. Watch one hour every day of interviews on YouTube. Una entrevista con un astronauta de la NASA. With an astronaut from, the Na from NASA. Or another with... Um, an interview with anybody, anybody interesting, in English, of course. That's the most important. 
donde los, cien, los diez minutos de entrevista son diez minutos de audición. So it's more efficient. So, but um, your pronunciation. I don't teach pronunciation. I correct phonetic mistakes. I correct pronunciation mistakes. But I personally don't focus my class on pronunciation because 99.5% of all of my students have a Spanish accent or Mexican accent. They have a foreign accent. But the pronunciation is not so defective that they cannot communicate well. There are many people who communicate with a bad, bad pronunciation. Yo puedo cambiar una pronunciación muy mala en español, pero puedo seguir comunicándome con eficacia. Y si es necesario con este acento, yo puedo negociar un contrato millonario y traerlo bajo el brazo firmado. Fine. ¿Ves? Una pronunciación atroz. Ahora bien, lo que cuenta es entender la primera y poder soltar lo que uno quiere decir con eficacia, con una pronunciación buena o mediocre, preferiblemente buena. Pero some people have more difficulty than others in pronouncing well. And I don't, you should not become obsessed with pronunciation. Try to improve it, but don't become obsessed. It's not a priority. There are many people, si vamos a la ONU in New York, o vamos a Bruselas, and you listen to people using English, you hear the German speaking, speaking like this. We are off to see the facade. It's very important to begin today. That's a very strong. And then you see the French. The French speak English. This is a book. This book is very big. I use this book on a daily basis. Uh, yeah, okay. And then you have the Italians who are talking to English and like this, and I think it's a bit, and you see, it's a, it doesn't matter. We understand them. And they do their job in the United Nations in New York effectively with imperfect pronunciation. Don't be a perfectionist with pronunciation. It's a terrible mistake. So try to improve it, but it, it should not be your priority. I know sé que tengas una pronunciación tan rica y mala. Que necesitas un logo. Bueno, probablemente a person, no, this is normally, a person who doesn't pronounce English well, they don't have good diction in Spanish. So it's, it's a skill. Esto es una cuestión de habilidad, no de lengua o de idioma. Es una cuestión de habilidad. De nitidez en el habla. De vocalizar. So if a person has very defective pronunciation in English, probably my first recommendation is to go to a logopeda in Spanish. Go to a speech therapist and prove your Spanish. La resolución de tu habla, de tu exposición verbal. And then when you have, you speak better Spanish, you transfer the ability to English. It's an ability, it's a skill, you see. So that's what you need to remember. David, last question. You usually say, quita la SSA, eh? nevertheless, to finish a speech when you go to the cerros, tu vida. Can you tell me the meaning? Nevertheless, in, in de todas maneras, nevertheless means no obstante. Pero también es bueno, total. Nevertheless, eh, I use it all the time on the radio. And when I'm bor por la cerro tu vida means when I'm I'm going off on tangents. Well, nevertheless, ah, let's go back to the original subject. Nevertheless means, uh, al fin al cabo, que más da? Nevertheless, it's a bit like that. It's a way, it's a tr trick of speech. Huh? No, Marta, baja. Yes. Mar Marta is going too fast. Salma, David, Dave, Dave Moon. All right. How do you say hacer un flaco favor? To do a disservice. Hacer un desservicio, doble en medio, dis, D-I-S, y latina, D-I-S, y luego service, service. To do a disservice, to do a disservice, si hablo demasiado despacio aquí, os estoy haciendo un flaco favor. If I speak too slowly, I'm, I'm spoiling you, I'm babying you, mi mandos, I'm doing you a disservice. 
I'm doing you a disservice. Literalmente estoy haciéndoles a ustedes o estoy haciéndoos un desservicio. O sea, un flaco algo. Got it? Understand? All right. Salma, I'd like to... I'd like to say hacer punto in English, but I don't know. Hacer punto is the knit. Knitting, no? Knitting. Tejer. O knit. Bueno, hacer punto. You have to make a sweater. Un jersey, un pullover. You, you knit. K N I T. Kamuda. N I T. Con kamuda land. Knit. Knitting. I'm knitting. La -da 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 -da. Hello. I knit. I know that in the United Nations, there's one woman, and she's a simultaneous translator in La UNO, in New York, in the United Nations. And she knits because it's, it becomes automatic. Like these, these simultaneous translators are like machines. I mean, they just hear it and just repeat it in a second language. Hemos decidido cancelar el proyecto. We've decided to cancel the project. And she knits. Hace punto. All right. Where are we? Salma, thank you very much. Carmen. Hello, Richard. I'm studying because I have an English exam tomorrow. Oh, poor girl. Te acompaño sentimiento. Yeah. My condolences. Esta expresión, te acompaño sentimiento, we say mis condolencias. <laughs> Basically, my condolences. Ya cubres. La responsabilidad, el expediente. My condolences. Good luck tomorrow. Don't get too nervous. The sky is not going to fall. Your happiness in life is not going to be dependent on that exam tomorrow. But get up 30 minutes earlier than usual and go over your notes. Simplemente leer por encima los apuntes o lo que sea. Just go over it. And then here in Spain, Carmen, serás Carmen Lopes, Lopez con S. Será portuguesa? Gallega? Or maybe from Latin America, or maybe Brasileña, I don't know. Because here, uh, in Spanish, of course, it's Lopez, Lopez con Z, Z, Lopez. But Lopez con S is usually Portuguese, and se pronuncia Lopes, Lopes. Uh, Carlos Lopes, I think it was Carlos Lopes, a Portuguese man who won the marathon in 1984, Maratón, en las Olimpiadas del 84, in Los Angeles, Lopes. Well, Carmen, don't get um, don't get nervous. Calmly, this life will go on. <laughs> Do your best, Daniela. A, is a good advice. No sé lo que significa esto, Daniela. Primero, advice con C, no con S. El verbo es con S. Se pronuncia advise, que es aconsejar, asesorar. To advise. Eso es con ese. Ahora, consejo, asesoramiento es advice. Pero es una C. Advice. Y es incontable. No puedes decir un consejo. Hay que decir algo de asesoramiento. Some advice. Give me some advice. I need some advice. Necesito un consejo. Is I need some advice. Yes. O si quieres individualizarlo. I need a piece of advice. Un trozo, un pedazo, una pieza de asesoramiento. I need a piece of advice. Pero recomiendo some advice. I need some advice. I need some advice. Y luego, a tip. T-I-P, como propina, tip. Que tiene muchos significados. A punto. Fingertips. Llama de los dedos. Fingertips. But a tip es un pequeño consejo práctico para una cosa muy puntual. Oye, mira, en vez de, coger, en vez de agarrar el, el palo de golf así, agárrelo así. It's a tip. Te estoy dando un pequeño consejo. It's a tip. Pero cuando necesito que alguien me asesore y me, me aconseje, usamos advice. And I need some advice. Some advice. All right. Where are we? Oh, we're running out of time. Jose Amaya. How are you, Jose? Accent is the most difficult thing to improve. Yes, but, but yo tengo un acento en español desde hace 45 años y no me pasa nada. He construido un pequeño imperio con este acento, así que da igual. It really doesn't matter. Just focus on being intelligent, being well prepared, know your subjects, and, uh, and understand perfectly, yeah, if possible. The accent is less important.
Don't worry about an accent. I think it's very important to go. That's a Mex typical strong Mexican accent. Spanish. I think I think it's very imp I think it's very important very important. But the Swedish have strange accents. The Germans have strange accents. Listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger is f always interesting. I, I am very angry with you. <laughs> it's it's uh, but it doesn't matter. Your effectiveness and your success will not be dependent on your accent or your pronunciation. It will be dependent on your intelligence, your preparation, and your self-confidence. And self-confidence is a result of your preparation and understanding perfectly. Boom! And then you're ready to contribute or to intervenir. Con fuerza, si es posible. All right, so Jose, Jose Maya, thank you very much. Luis Caro, hi there, you're right, Richard. Since time ago, I've been watching documentaries with a good base. Nuestro amigo Luis, mejor la vida con documentales, eh? no con películas, no series. Documentaries with a good comprehension of them. All right. Yes, and it's true. When you watch a movie, you become depressed. No entiendo nada. No, palabras sueltas habré entendido. Movies are not a correct representation of real life. So, don't watch movies. Solo sirven para desanimar. Maria, Maika, interesting name. Hi, Richard. I like your method. You learn a lot. You learn a lot. Me, I don't learn. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Maria. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. Vicente, Maria. Hi, my dear teacher. And Carmen Lopes of the Cabo Verde, Cape Verde. Portuguese. All right. Ya la sabía, ya lo sabía, eh? I'm from Cape Verde, but I live in Asturias. No, no. Escucha. Carmen. Soy de Cabo Verde, pero vivo en Asturias desde el año 78. Entiendo. Ahora, vamos a ver, ver en inglés. I'm from Cape Verde, but I have been living in Asturias since 1978. Cuando vas al pasado, incorporas un momento al pasado y lo traes hasta el presente vigente, sigues viviendo en Asturias, usamos lo que se llama presente perfecto o presente perfecto continuo. I have been living in Asturias since 1978. Thank you very much for your words. Don't write, no, no more messages, please, because I need to go at the top of the hour. At the top of the hour, at the bottom of the hour, at the top of the hour, bam, at one o'clock, sharp. A la una en punto. Hay tres formas. Oh, dos. <laughs> I don't remember. One o'clock sharp. One o'clock on the dot. Se dice muchísimo. Se dice más que sharp. Eh? One o'clock on the dot. And at exactly one o'clock. All right. At exactly one o'clock. Ahora, la, la expresión o'clock no significa nada. Es como el apéndice del cuerpo humano. No vale para nada. O'clock, literalmente, de el reloj, del reloj, of the clock, no significa nada, pero se dice one o'clock. Se dice mucho, ¿eh? pero solo cuando es arriba de todo. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Vamos a bailar a rock alrededor del reloj. Ba, ba, ba. No more messages, please. Oikles, may I suggest you, you're recording your life conferences? Like that one I attended that you gave in Retiro Town Hall premises last month? Hmm. Well, when I go to the Retiro Town Hall, La Junta Municipal de Retiro, which is today, eh, this evening at 7 p.m., I don't give, no es una conferencia. Es lo que llamo master class. Y hablo de todo. Todo bajo el sol. Everything under the sun. I talk about everything. But not, it's not a formal speech. Nevertheless, it's very good for your ears, so I recommend you come. So thank you very much, Ricles. Jose Amaya, again, blessings and blessings for you as well. Isabel Lebron Algaba, thank you. It's a real pleasure. All right. Marta, it's almost time. It's almost time. Happy trails. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Romeo dijo a Julieta, vice versa. El separarse es una pena tan dulce. <laughs> Parting, partir, o sea, partir, o en este caso separarse. She said, Romeo, 
Romeo, parting is such sweet sorrow. Sorrow, como sorry, pero o w al final. Sorrow is pena, una pena, dolor, dolor, no dolor físico. It's such sorrow, pena. And so it's true, parting is that sweet sorrow, but that's life. All good things must come to an end. Es una frase hecha en inglés. Todas las buenas cosas han de, tienen que llegar a un fin. All good things must come to an end. And it's a pleasure. So I wish you the best for your Monday, and I will see you again. Ne Monday next week is a holiday in Madrid. Tuesday. Okay, Marta? Tuesday. Next week is an exception. This program will be at 12 o'clock noon. I'm going to check my agenda. Eh? I'm going to check Don Britannico's DD and I'm going to check my diary. Next Tuesday, the 10th. Yeah, I know that, Martin. I'm looking at my agenda. No problem. 12 o'clock. Os parece? Shall we? 12 o'clock. Tuesday of next week, Tuesday the 10th. Put it in your agenda. So don't forget, I'll see you next Tuesday. So goodbye, Juan Carlos. You are young still. Díselo a mis cervicales aquí, que me duelen. I'm still young. Se dice you're still young. Sigue siendo jóvenes. Joven, eres todavía joven. You're still young. Gotta go. I have to go. So goodbye. Thank you very much.